Yeah, this is just something I built for myself, and I have to say I really like it. Uh, some people call this intersegmental traction. Other people just a roller tra uh, traction table. Uh, interesting, the first one of these I ever saw was one my dad had built many, many years ago. Now, these are 6-inch pneumatic wheels, but I'm just running them flat. That way, they're still very firm, but they actually, they give pretty good, too. So, and they're just set on bolts here, too. And I arranged them in a 120-degree um, sequence around a circle here, too. And they're just long bolts holding together. This is the machine right here. It's really a, just a, a plywood box I built that travels back and forth. And I have this tilting steel top I've hinged to it. And I'll go into the parts here a little bit better, uh, a little bit later than two. But uh, it's really three motors I'm running here. Now, I, interesting, I had all three motors on hand. I'm not a hoarder, but I do think Thomas A. Edison's statement to invent, you need a good imagination and a pile of junk. Well, hey, I got the junk. But uh, it really makes it simple here, too. Now, I'm actually using these Spark Rev motor controllers. And these are the heavy-duty ones. I didn't really need to use this, that stronger ones. And I, I might switch them to the lighter ones, too. I actually added one more, three of them here, too. And the whole thing's powered by this Arduino uh, Uno here, too. Um, so I'm really kind of liking what's happening. And, and this little um, voltage here, I'm not using the LM voltage converters anymore. I kind of like these external ones a lot, a lot more efficient than what they are then too. And one of the advantages I found out of mounting everything to the board here, to everything to the cart, is that I really have to have one wire. This is the 12 volt wire coming from my battery at this stage. And really I only have to have one wire connecting the whole thing. And so I didn't have to have a lot of flexible wires and everything moving around here too, since this is actually controlled by a uh, radio frequency little switch I had then too, I'll explain that too. And this is an earlier picture of the onboard switch here. I'm, I'm mounting in this to the outside, so it'll be an out external switch then too, which is nice then too. And the hinges I had, this is just what I had on hand. They, they spaced okay, but they're not quite a pair, but eh, oh well, such is life. But uh, this is a very long linear actuator I had on hand. Uh, enough to go my whole spine all the way to top and bottom and then some then too. So there's another one hidden the way back there too. That raises this whole thing up here too. Now this whole box is just actually held up and runs on these casters. These are non-swivel casters. And I have a couple more casters on the side to keep them lined up so to speak. But they, they work great for what they're doing then too. Um, what powers this thing is this little... Um, make motor 12 volt 50 rpm now by itself it does not have enough power um, it's just it's nice and good but still needs more power so I had to, really had to even gear it down a little bit further than two so Andy Mark had all these little parts here too and I'm taking this from the gear motor to a 12 uh, sprocket 12 2 sprocket up to a 60 and then this shaft I'm taking it down here to a, another 12 sprocket up to another 60 again so that gives me plenty of power I did have to weld up these aluminum pieces in the middle here too. This is basically just giving them a little bit of the uh, strength in too. I could have made it in plywood, but you know, I had the welding parts and scraps in too, so it worked really good. Um, half inch shaft I'm using for everything here too, and it's really strong what it's going to be. And there is that picture of that linear actuator in the front there too. This is it right here moving. Uh, and again, I can even go slower. Um, that's the beauty about these. Um, Res bar controllers. If you know how to control a servo, well, you know how to control this. And yeah, there's my voltage um, little board I like then too. They're a lot more efficient, like I said. And um, th on this picture, this is a little bit earlier picture. I just got the two um, motor controllers up and down then too. Raises up and down, and then actually moves it from the head down to the bottom of the spine then too. Um, now, what really makes this thing pop is I actually added this little remote control. And right now, the A and C raises it up and down. The B will stop it, okay? And so you can stop it at one place and raise it up and down, and then the D is just cancel it. This is just a little four-channel thing, and I kind of, each one goes to a port. I just look at the ports, and if one's high, I know to tell the software what to do then. So, but, yeah, this is, this little thing is really made this so much better. I know my dad's, he had, you couldn't adjust it uh, unless you got out with a crank or something or a wrench. And this is just all automatic. And <laughs> this really makes it um, uh, much better than two. This is it right here. You can see the, the, the smaller spark uh, rev controller put in the far right hand side. And the bottom left hand side, there's the uh, radio frequency receiver then too. 
um, also had it in hand in a drawer. And so, yeah, uh, it is, it does have a custom uh, um, shield. However, this shield's the same shield I've used for my adapting my wild thing carts. So I'm able to just pull one out of my um, extra parts drawer and modify this one since it already has servo controllers and I just actually adapted one more. There is um, limit switches. This is the limit switch I put in the very top of the cart. And so when this thing goes all the way back, it will actually hit the top. But I also make my linear actuators. I match them so they can't go too far. So this hits it first, and about just an eighth of an inch later, my linear actuator is uh, maxed out. And there's another limit switch I added right here. It's not in this picture, but that tells me when the uh, whole mechanism is all the way down, as low as it could possibly be then, too. And it just won't go further then, too. Uh, and again, it's the end of the travel too. So now what I did, I just used some this two inch foam and put on the whole thing. And right now I'm just throwing it on a top and it works great. I might, this is for me. If, if I, if I'm, if I want to really glitz this up, whatever, I might do something a little more fancy, but I doubt it. So, but anyway, this is, this is it. Love it. Fantastic. Um, I had a hard time finding more inf information on this. So, you know, if this helps, enjoy.